Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. If you love music, you're going to want to subscribe below to this channel so you don't miss out on our daily content. Artist managers, record producers, and A&R label reps are always looking for artists that are talented, beautiful to look at, and dynamic on stage. If you can find an artist or band that checks all those boxes, you've found that elusive full package. Now, if the artist also writes their own music, it's a major bonus. Duran Duran was indeed the full package, with their movie star looks, charismatic showmanship, and gifted musical ability. They were the embodiment of a supergroup. Duran Duran lived up to that billing, becoming the premier band of the MTV-driven second British invasion of the 1980s in America. Of course, their popularity was massive all around the world, but particularly in their native UK where they had 14 top singles, and in the US where 21 singles charted on the Billboard Hot 100. Now, I did a video some time ago where I said that, to me, Tears for Fears were like the Beatles of the 80s. And immediately, everybody jumped on me, you know, screaming as fast as their fingers could type that Duran Duran were the Beatles of the 80s. And they were right in terms of popularity. Of course, when I said that Tears for Fears were like the Beatles of the 80s, I was speaking more sonically. But Duran Duran fever was the 80s version of Beatlemania. I mean, seriously. Duran Duran were the five-star generals of the second British invasion. For a while, they were the face of MTV, which... Really is another thing. Duran Duran were not only brilliant songwriters and musicians, but they were also very astute marketers. They took great advantage of the video age. And because of their attention to detail there, they were catapulted into the mainstream when MTV was creating a revolution on cable at that time. Duran Duran's music videos were shot in 35 millimeter film that gave them a more polished look. And that quality lifted them above their other contemporaries, no doubt. They also collaborated with reputable film directors, increasing their quality even that more. Starting in 1984, the band were early innovators using video technology in their live stadium shows. John Taylor and Nick Rhodes put Duran Duran together in Birmingham, England in 1978, and they more than paid their dues. Before becoming new wave icons, Nick performed as a DJ while John worked the door to a nightclub in Birmingham called Rum Runner. After a bunch of early lineup changes, the foundation of Duran Duran was solidified with Nick Rhodes on keys. His bandmates call him the controller because of his leadership as the driving force behind the band. Nick constantly experimented with innovative use of synthesizers to incorporate it into the band's sound so that Duran Duran avoided sounding like a novelty band. John Taylor, of course, on bass. John was the band member that instilled the rhythm and dance groove to the prominent Duran Duran sound. Roger Taylor on drums. Roger was known as the quiet one who let it all hang out on the stage with his ferocious playing style. Andy Taylor was on lead guitar. Andy was a revered musician who, in tandem with John on bass, really gave Duran Duran a rock edge that further separated him from other bands of the New Wave era. And of course, lead vocalist Simon Le Bon, who went on to receive three Ivor Novello Awards from the British Academy of Songwriters, Composers, and Authors, including an award for outstanding contribution to British music. The diehard Duran Duran fans who were referred to as Durannies, they all know this, but the average music fan may not. Simon Le Bon was not the original lead singer for Duran Duran. The first lead singer was actually Stephen Duffy, who went by the stage names Stephen Tintin Duffy, or simply Tintin. Duffy was the original lead singer and drummer for Duran Duran in 1979 and left the band before they were signed in 1980 to pursue a solo career. Duffy had a few new wave dance hits. Remember Kiss Me? Kiss me with your and Hold It before forming the Lilac Time. I digress. Duran Duran were undeniable pinup idols. Now, teenage girls plastered their walls with pictures of every member of the band for sure, but the music of Duran Duran was not Tiger Beat Bubblegum Fair. Duran Duran actually wrote amazing songs with heady lyrics that gave their music substance and artistic credibility. Hey, teenage girls lost their minds for the Beatles, and that didn't hurt their credibility one iota. And as of today, Duran Duran is the only act to have a number one James Bond theme. You to a kill pulled that off, which is quite a feat looking at the other acts who've recorded themes. I mean, everybody from Paul McCartney to Adele, Madonna, recently Billie Eilish. Duran Duran were massive 
I remember that my older sister also had posters of them all over her wall. And one time I unpinned one, I snuck it with me when my mom took me to the local barber for my summer haircut, which was usually a flat top. I mean, the barber's nickname was Hatchet Jack for good reason. Anyway, I can still remember the look on this old guy's face when I showed him this picture of Duran Duran and I, you know, asked him, can you style my hair to look like this? And he looked at me like I had lobster crawling out of my ears, stared at me for like 10 seconds, and then he said something like, son, what in the hell does style your hair mean? I mean, why would you want to look like a girl? This was, after all, small town Idaho in 1985, so... Yeah, but Duran Duran does not get the credit that they deserve as songwriters, particularly Simon Le Bon, who's the primary lyricist. In each Duran Duran creation, there's always some clever turn of phrase or engrossing subtext that I believe really set them apart from other bands, and not just from other bands of that era. They could write catchy hooks and melodies with the best in the history of the rock era and still make you really ponder what the song is about. Simon Le Bon also had an instantly recognizable voice, and Duran Duran had a very distinct sound that singled them out from the hordes of bands in the new romantic, new wave movement of the early to mid 80s. Also, the quality of their music was consistently great into the decade or so that would follow. They, along with a few other bands, survived the changes of the musical landscape where other artists from that time faded away and were all but forgotten. Duran Duran remained at the top of their game. I mean, in the middle of the grunge era, in 1993, Ordinary World hit number three on the U.S. charts, and Come Undone went to number seven as the record they came from sold over a million copies. Really, the only bands from that time and genre that had that great a success in the 90s were U2, The Cure, R.E.M., Depeche Mode. I'm going to point out what I mean in my Duran Duran Fiverr. My picks for Duran Duran's best recorded performances. Number five, Save a Prayer, the album version from Rio. This ballad written by Simon Le Bon about an intense one-night stand really resonated with the early Duran Duran adopters. It was a number two single in the UK and top 10 in many parts of Europe, but it was unreleased in his first run in the US. Even though it wasn't a radio single in America, the video became very popular on MTV and that put more fuel on the fire for Duran Duran's breakout in the US in 82. Riding the band's popularity, EMI Capital Records released Save a Prayer in the US in 85 and the song went to number 16 on the Billboard Hot 100. Simon's words here are earnest and poetic, particularly in this lyric. Feel the breeze deep on the inside. Look you down to do your well. If you can, you'll see the world and all is fire. Man. Number four, Rio. This didn't get much attention outside of airplay in Australia, but after Duran Duran had their breakout hit in the US, radio programmers discovered some older Duran Duran material and there was renewed interest in Rio. The reissue of the single in 1983 propelled it to number 14 on the Billboard Hot 100. Rio is another sexy composition from Duran Duran telling us about a girl named Rio that is a bird of paradise with a cherry ice cream smile and dance is just like a river twisting through a dusty land. The songwriting brilliantly creates vivid imagery in the theater of the mind. Rio is simply a very alluring experience set to hook-centric music. Number three, Hungry Like the Wolf, the primal new wave classic inspired by the Little Red Riding Hood fairy tale. This was the breakout radio smash for Duran Duran, and the video for the song ranks as one of the most played ever on MTV. The video also won the first Grammy Award for Best Short Form Music in 1984. It was a certified gold single, rising to number three on the Billboard Hot 100, number one in Canada, number five in the UK, and number one on the US rock chart. Hungry Like the Wolf is full of cool, thought-provoking lyrics, but my favorites are these. I smell like a sound. Mouth is alive with juices like wine. Straddle the line in discord and rhyme. Smell like a sound? <laughs> and don't think about that brain twister too long. Your head might explode. Brilliant. 
And number two, from the album Seven and the Ragged Tiger, The Reflex. A massive success that topped the pop charts in the US, the UK, Ireland, Netherlands, Belgium. In its original form, the band thought that The Reflex was only going to be an album cut, but famed producer Niall Rogers turned it into an infectious jam with heavy percussion, um, big dance groove, all those amazing effects. More superb songwriting from Duran Duran, especially the chorus line. The Reflex is a lonely child who's waiting by the park. The Reflex is in charge of finding treasure in the dark. And watching over Lucky Clover, isn't that bizarre? So Yeah, wonderfully bizarre. Every 80s kid knew the lyrics to this song. We sang it to the top of our lungs. And number one, Ordinary World. The music industry referred to Ordinary World as a comeback for Duran Duran because several of their single releases in 89 and 90 didn't hit the top 40. And those critics wrote Duran Duran off as a trendy new wave band whose popularity had faded with the decade. Boy, were they wrong. Duran Duran returned to glory with a vengeance, releasing their apex composition. Ordinary World features one of the finest pop arrangements that these ears have ever heard. A range of emotions hit you during the five minute, 39 second album version of this masterpiece from their self-titled album, 1993, sometimes referred to as the wedding album. There's a part of the song that makes you want to cry, um, another part that you become very introspective, and the end of the song that just gives you triumphant joy. The first time I heard Ordinary World, I knew it had to be inspired from something deeply personal and would come to find out that Ordinary World was the last installment of a trilogy of songs that Simon wrote about the death of a close friend in 1986. Simon was reluctant to speak about the song's origin for a long time. Finally, in an interview in 2004, he revealed his inspiration and the pain that he was going through that compelled him to write this spectacular song. Once again, Simon Lebon and his Duran Duran bandmates demonstrate their genius as lyricist and composer in this soaring ballad, as in this verse structure. Pride will tear us both apart. Well, now pride's out the window, across the rooftops, run away. Left me in the vacuum of my heart. And then, of course, in the chorus. But I won't cry for yesterday. There's an ordinary world. Somehow I have to find. And as I try to make my way to the ordinary world, I will learn to survive. As, as a listener, this song just ties you in knots emotionally. There are no easy answers here. Duran Duran created an absolute paragon and a song that works so flawlessly for any trial that we face, whether as a globe or as individuals. It's my go-to song in these times and just seems to put it all in perspective with the brilliant lyrics at the end. Papers in the roadside tell of suffering and greed. Fear today, forgot tomorrow. Here besides the news of holy war and holy need, ours is just a little sorrow talk. This song is a perfect example of why genres, media created labels, and decades ultimately fell to define great music. It's all in the final full throttle, heart-wrenching yet joyful plea from Simon Le Bon at the end of this masterwork, proving what all of us Durantys have always known. This band is not 80s new wave or new romantic. Simon is a vocalist for the ages, and Duran Duran are metamorphic and timeless artists. To hear all the songs discussed here, 
check out our curated playlist below. Also, click on the Amazon link to get Duran Duran's greatest songs on vinyl. Leave us a comment about Duran Duran. What are your top five songs? What's your fiver? Also, if you can, support us on Patreon. That helps us do more interviews, create more videos. If you like our content, subscribe to our channel. Help us keep the music alive. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Stay safe. Thank you.